While the Democrats are currently pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into ballot chasing, voter registration, they have hundreds of full-time staffers in Arizona, Wisconsin, and Georgia. Turning Point Action has a couple dozen. We're doing the best we can. We know of no other full-time organizers out there. The RNC certainly doesn't have them. Ron DeSantis Super PAC, sitting on $110 million, has just said that they are doing a $12 million ad placement right now to support Ron DeSantis. I think Ron DeSantis is a great governor. Why is he trying to ruin his political career right now? Spend that money to help us win in the general. Why are you buying ads to make consultants rich in Iowa? Just say, look, I'm going to go be governor of Florida and turn Florida into the most Republican state. I'm going to deploy my $100 million to help us defeat Joe Biden. He would be hero status in the Republican Party, win or lose. He would look magnanimous. He would look like a confident leader. He would look like he is bigger than just the personal pettiness that's going on right now. Instead, you might as well just burn that money. Donald Trump will be the nominee, absent an unforeseen black swan event. We need that money as a movement right now, and you're lighting it on fire. Lighting it on fire. This is why the Democrats are so confident. They're so cocky. Indict Trump, weigh him down, make the Republicans fight amongst themselves, burn the money, do the boring stuff in Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia, and squeak out a win. And meanwhile, we're worried on a vanity project. It's got to change very soon. Well, it looks like we are in for some very stupid stuff uh, moving forward in the Republican primary uh, for President of the United States. Donald Trump's still the front runner, far and away, but man, is this an insecure human being. And his supporters might actually be worse for some reason, at least some of them. It doesn't have to be this way. I've voted for the guy multiple times, but man, it is just weird sometimes to watch them operate in a way A, you know they're not being honest, and B, you know what they're saying is just completely crazy. Let's start with Donald Trump. A rumor are strong in political circles that <sighs> Ron to sanctimonious. Wow, it's an entire sentence. And we're only to the comma. That makes very little sense. Has a typo at the very beginning, but we're going to be told that it was some sort of brilliant move to get people to pay attention to it because that's how the game is played. And it's got a stupid nickname. Either way, the point is this. Rumors have it that Ron DeSantis is going to drop out of the presidential race because his poll numbers are so bad and he's in, in third and, and fourth place in some states, which is generally not true. And he'll be dropping out to primary Rick Scott for United States Senate, which, again, is never going to happen. The whole thing is just a, a stupid lie uh, by the president of the United States who's just looking to get some attention, which is so weird and strange. You're winning. Win. That's, that's literally all you got to do, Donald Trump, is win. And you're doing it. So just keep doing that. There's no reason for any of this. And there's definitely no reason to follow that dumb nonsense up with this dumb nonsense uh, from Charlie Kirk. While the Democrats are currently pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into ballot chasing, voter registration, they have hundreds of full-time staffers in Arizona, Wisconsin, and Georgia. Turning Point Action has a couple dozen. We're doing the best we can. We know of no other full-time organizers out there. The RNC certainly doesn't have them. Ron DeSantis Super PAC, sitting on $110 million, has just said that they are doing a $12 million ad placement right now to support Ron DeSantis. I think Ron DeSantis is a great governor. Why is he trying to ruin his political career right now? Spend that money to help us win in the general. Why are you buying ads to make consultants rich in Iowa? Just say, look, I'm going to go be governor of Florida and turn Florida into the most Republican state. I'm going to deploy my $100 million to help us defeat Joe Biden. He would be hero status in the Republican Party. Drop out of the race because Donald Trump is beating you so badly. And then give all your money to Donald Trump. Does this sound like someone who is uh, sure of their position? Or does it sound like someone who is increasingly desperate? Uh, well, let me help you out here. It sounds like a bunch of people who are becoming increasingly desperate. That's what it looks like. That's what it sounds like. Because that's exactly what it is. Why? I don't know. I, I'm not suggesting they're losing. Like That's why they're being desperate. I don't think that's the case. But it just looks so incredibly desperate. What are they seeing in their internals? that are making them act this way.
Now, we know during the debate, Ron, Ron DeSantis did very well. Some say he won. I think he came in second to Vivek Ramaswamy, but that's just me. Yet, it's ramped up Trump and Trump world's attack on it for some reason. And not only is that desperate silliness out there, as I was looking at this and, and looking at what Charlie Kirk is trying to say here, like, get out and just give your money to Donald Trump. I mean, this is Donald Trump who won't, who won't even pay his own lawyers, and you want other people to hand over their money to him in a campaign that's not even over yet. Did Donald Trump do anything to help people win in 2020? Two? No, he didn't. In fact, he operated against Ron DeSantis before the vote was taking place. It just makes no sense. But Charlie Kirk is on a bit of a run here recently. Trump 2.0, he says. 47 will not be 45. You know, if you were to take these points that Charlie Kirk thinks he's making here for Donald Trump, and you had a Democrat making these points, you would say, yeah, these are all the things he promised to do. But what if a Republican made these points? These are the things Donald Trump promised and didn't do, and now he's saying he'll do them this time. He had a chance to do a lot of them anyway. He'll fire, file the, he'll fire the deep state. Didn't do it. Thousands of Democrat bureaucrats will get fired on day one. Local D.C. housing market will be impacted. Didn't do it. Ukraine insanity will stop. This is the whole on day one, we're going to stop this. Whatever. A whole agencies will move out of the D.C. swamp. Not going to happen. Department of Education going to be eliminated completely. Love to see it. Border will be restored. Let the illegal immigration activists sue. Great. That's one thing Donald Trump did do. And he did a great job at that. So, yeah, that's one you can actually go with. Deportation of Biden's uh, illegals, uh, millions of illegals will commence again. Let them sue. Great. Do it. Criminal intel agents will be prosecuted. Never happened. American energy production unleashed. He was right on that one. Yep, no doubt. College funding will be revoked uh, for secret AA admissions. I don't even know what that is. Affirmative action, I guess that is. Okay, good. I'd like to see that. You didn't do anything about that when you were president. A JFK files released. You promised that. Didn't do it. Federal DEI positions abolished. They actually grew uh, when you were in. And military recruitment will surge. Uh, good luck on that. I hope you're right. A Trump 2.0 will be a retribution presidency. Look, that's fantastic and all. And I, and I think it's a great point. And I'd love to see it. But this is not coming from a position of strength. It is coming from an ultimate position of weakness. Why? I don't know. They act like they're desperate even when they don't have to be. They act like they're losing even when they're not. And it's not the good kind of I'm going to play by from behind stuff. It's the weird I'm desperate and scared kind of uh, desperation. And, and Charlie Kirk's been doing these weird things for a while. Why? I have absolutely uh, no idea. Here's another one for you. He, he takes a shot at Alabama Senator Katie Britt. He says there's no legitimate excuse for Senator Katie Britt to be the only federal elected official from Alabama not endorsing Donald Trump, especially when he went to bat for her in the primary, and especially when Trump, the rule of law in our entire country is under assault. And this is like when they say, oh, I, I guess you just want more war. It's just it's this random thing you say to someone, even though it doesn't make much sense. And the reason Katie Britt did not endorse Donald Trump when all the other people from Alabama did endorse Donald Trump is because she's part of the people looking at the 2022 election. So that's one of the reasons uh, why that happened. It's not probably the only reason, but it's definitely one of them. Now, why they are so upset about this, I have absolutely no idea. But Charlie Kirk threw a little tantrum about this and surely didn't throw it on his own. Doesn't have to be this way, guys. You're winning. Now, I, I can see why you think you might need to worry that's fine. I still think Donald Trump's going to be the nominee, and this kind of stuff just makes you look desperate. Attacking random people who are of no threat to you makes no sense. Attacking Ron DeSantis this entire time made no sense. Trump's still doing it. And then they say, get out, give him the money. And now you're attacking Katie Britt. <laughs> and then coming out and saying things like, well, if elected, he'll actually do what he said last time, this time. It's not a very good argument. But are there really good arguments they can make other than he deserves it? I don't know. They're not making those arguments. They're really not. Their only argument seems to be he was cheated in 2020. And we're going to prove that in court because we don't want to hold a press conference to prove it. Uh, so he was cheated in 2020. And now 
He deserves it. It's not very compelling. It might work in a primary. It's not going to work in the general. So, no, do not give Donald Trump $110 million right now. Uh, there's no reason this race is still ongoing. Donald Trump is the clear front runner. But why does he look so desperate?